the Uniform Commercial Code. Whether you're sovereign or whether you're not, you're dealing in commerce. And when you're dealing in commerce, there's an agreement, a uniform agreement in this country, not this nation, this country, that has a standard that protects people in their contracting. Because you have the right to contract. Even in the treaty, you have the right to trade. You have the right to trade being uh, without interference from any other third party, okay? You have the right to trade under your own terms and conditions, all right? Now, when you waive that right, and they don't tell you that you have waived the right, they're exercising their rights under the Uniform Commercial Code. And you're not. So go and look up the Uniform Commercial Code and look up those sections that apply to reserving your rights. I would tell you what those sections are tonight, but for me to just tell you does not help you. It only helps you if you go look it up and you see it for yourself. Am I right, Fami Arasante? Because they did that, and now they understand how to sign documents, not just because I gave some instruction on certain things. They've seen the verbiage in those, in those books, and they've seen how it applies and has, how it has been used in the Supreme Court cases and all the treaty law that applies to these things. It's much better for you to go find it for yourself. So that's why I just give you that right there. The other part is this. You see, see my favorite word in there? Of. The United States Code of the Laws. The United States Code of the Laws is the code that's used by all of the United States district courts and federal court. This is what they use. So if you go into federal court, you must cite the United States Code that applies to the violations that are made against you. That's all you need to do, because they understand treaty and understand I've been there so many times discussing treaty and constitution and all those things like that. And trust me, when I go to court, they put everybody out the courtroom and they post uh, officers at the door on the inside and the outside because they don't want people to hear what I have to say. And then they come up with all these different little reasons and whatever and get me out of there because they don't want me in there because I know too much and, and I will speak. So the United States Code of the Laws has also the different codes and the procedures, the federal rules of civil procedure in there. All of the criminal code, because understand, if there's a, if there's a parking ticket, what they're saying is that we're suing you for a criminal offense. Did you all know that? If there's a speeding ticket, there's, that's a criminal offense. They're suing you in a criminal court. Do you all understand that? They're filing criminal charges against you for something so simple. All right, if you, if you agree to pay a tax bill and then you don't pay it like with the Internal Revenue Service, because understand they're the Internal Revenue Service, they're a private nonprofit corporation, there are 22 of them all around the country and they compete for your business. They compete. They don't share information and they collect money, on, they're in the business of collecting money on behalf of the United States Treasury, that's their job. Doesn't mean you have to use them, but if you have a contract with them, would you sign your W-4, right? You sign uh, um, a 1040 or 1040A or whatever, any of those other forms, you sign them. That's voluntary. Did you know your signature is voluntary? You can fill out the form and don't sign it and send it in. And even if you claim on there that you say you owe them money as long as you don't sign it, you have not, right, entered into a contract. You've given them all the information, but you have not entered into a contract which binds you. Do you understand? If you send the information, you have filed, and that's all that you're required to do. They don't say you're required to sign. They say, please sign. There's a difference. Please sign. Why? Please sign so we can come after you and take everything you've got. <laughs> okay. So when you look up the United States Code of the Laws, you're going to find all kinds of things in there because municipalities who have codes and, and, and uh, regulations and all those things and the state statutes and all that, all of them fall up under the jurisdiction of the United States Code of the Laws because no municipality, no county, borough, township, city, uh, uh, state can make a law that's outside the boundaries of federal law. They must all adhere to federal law. 
But if you agree, if they come up with a policy and you agree and enter into a contract to participate and, and be a part of that policy, then when you try to go to the federal court for protection, the federal court, they're not going to tell you in words they'll dismiss the case, but the reason they're dismissing the cases is because somewhere along the line you signed a contract that behind your back has been produced and put into the court record. And what I always tell people to do is to go down to the file room and get a copy of the docket sheet and get a copy of your file of everything that's ever been put on the record concerning you. And then you go back and correct those things and say, produce the contract or take it out the file. You have to file your paperwork your motion to the court and say that these things were filed in violation of whatever code applies, of whatever UCC paragraph that applies. These things are in violation of UCC dot dot dot, United States Code dot dot dot. You petition the court to have them removed from your record. Do you understand how simple this, this is not hard. This is not rocket science. This is what it takes is your perseverance to follow through the steps and get this thing done. Because if you don't do it, certainly it's going to remain on your record. And guess what? No matter how long you live, you can always trace, they always go back and trace something on your record back to you. I don't care if you correct your name or anything like that, which I tell people, even when you correct your name, what we have people stop using your social security number as a trade number. <laughs> That's one of the main things you have to do. Stop using that Social Security number. The Social Security Administration tells you, do not give your Social Security number to anyone. And anyone that you choose to give it to, you have the right to demand, one, how they're going to use it. And you have, under certain terms and conditions, to deny them to use it certain ways. For example, if you got something on your credit report, it's R. Sante, we helped him resolve those issues. Um, how did they get on there? Did you authorize that? credit reporting company to send to to receive any information. Do you have a contract with them? Do you have a contract with JC Penney who you applied for the application? Did you tell them as a part of your contract that they could check your credit record? Is that part of the contract? The answer is no. That's not part of the contract and they violated UCC and the United States Code by contacting their credit reporting bureau to get any information on you. And then the credit reporting bureau has violated UCC and the code of the laws to send any information relative to you because you did not explicitly authorize them to do so. So guess what? They have done damage to you and then guess what? You have the right to sue for damages, am I right? Okay, so contracts and these courts, that's the only thing you're dealing with is contracts contracts and never forget that. I'm going to write it down. Because I'm ready to close and open the floor for questions and I just want to leave you with that word, contracts, and remember how to exist in contracts. Islam. Yes, brother. Okay.